So part of the reason I like tech is because I'm a geek, um, and I always have been a geek. So yeah, I'm going to actually get uh, Justin Lee to join me for a minute. Um, now, technology is an enabler. Technology is an enabler, and you have to think about technology that way. A cool, complicated app is not as important to an individual that needs to solve a problem. What I've done all my life is actually solve problems. So one of the companies that we have does travel insurance. We provide high risk, regular travel insurance. We work for banks. We help journalists that need to go to war-torn areas. We help NGOs. But we also deal with regular travelers. We do 24 hours, seven day a week, emergency medical and security assistance for travelers. I've got a tech background. I've got a security background, counterterrorism. We today, we actually provide products for individuals that travel and we democratize them. We bring it so that it goes to the masses. The first time I ever dealt with GPS systems was 29 years ago in Medellin, uh, Colombia. To make sure that police were not taken away, captured, or killed. Today, travelers worry about traveling. And I think Karen had it, safety was one of your points you had. It's safer to travel than it is to walk in your city. You're more likely to get hit by a car than you are to be attacked with a terrorist, to have a natural disaster happen, but consumers don't understand that. What we do is we enable consumers using technology, content, media, and delivering it to them where they are, with their mobile device, on their website, and we make sure that the information provided is not biased, it's universal, and we create content. In the healthcare space, we provide over 100,000 pages of content to help people understand local health issues. We do the same thing in travel, and we have to create adoption. People worry about the strangest things. People think that when they travel, they are safe because their company is gonna take care of them, a government's going to take care of them. The tour company, the travel agency is going to take care of them. Travel has changed. The largest amount of travelers today are from China. The majority of travelers from China are actually middle class. They haven't traveled. They don't understand cultural norms. So, uh, tech TO coming up here and talking about us being a diverse city has always been important for me. I grew up in Toronto. Being able to travel around the world and people have connections in Toronto is really important. And if you're looking at this now, we deal in China. We provide information in simplified Chinese. We don't provide an American biased. We're a Canadian. If you look at all of these things that can happen to a person, that's going on in their mind, but it's not reality. There are more travelers every single day than the day before. The coolest thing you can do is help them travel. One of the things I talk to university students about is travel makes a better world. Why? Because when we travel, we see that we're more similar than we are different. So I know this sounds like a social commentary, but we'll come to it. Can you go to the next one? Look, you can build cool apps by figuring out what the problem is with an individual or what's stopping them to do their adventure. We create integrated platforms because we want to integrate with others. We want to bring other people's technology or services into our applications. And we build platforms that large enterprise companies use, banks, insurance companies, travel companies. They're dinosaurs, and they quickly have to adapt. 
Like, look at me, I've been a geek. You think I'm not a geek? I got a wearable, I've got two phones. I'm a gamer still. So you look at this, what we're doing with GPS today is a little bit different. We're providing people dynamic and localized information. One of the great things is in, since 2008, um, oh yeah. Oops. since 2008, 2007, um, the iPhone's been such a great thing. I mean, uh, Robin mentioned uh, the first introduction he had to GPS was like in 1988, right? And those are really expensive. And really, the only companies that could really afford it were you know, large assistance companies and large enterprises that were uh, helped by those large assistance companies. But right now, uh, since 2008, since 2007, every device has a GPS device or GPS in it, and that has made it so you know the assistance and the um, information that a normal uh, person and smaller organizations can get is much easier. And so you're seeing that. And what I'd like to say is, as a developer, this is incredible. Like you've got so many more amazing tools that you can work with um, to actually get. Um, uh, curated and uh, targeted information to the user and deliver these really great experiences. Um, one of the questions was, uh, where do we think like AI? I think where do we think AI is going to go uh, with travel? And I think as companies build up their models and have more data, uh, it's going to be incredible. You're going to get even more like um, real-time information. In our in our case, you know, real-time alerts, allowing the user to get. Um, security alerts when they need it, um, and security information, you know, if an event happens in their localized area. Just to, just to be clear about that, we actually provide, it's okay. okay. We actually provide real-time alerts to individuals about civil unrest, natural disaster, terrorism, uh, transportation disruption, but it's really not for the alerts, it's to provide them information on the city. What's the weather like? It's raining. What's the temperature like? What are the people like? What's the infrastructure like? How do I get to the best place to stay or how do I get the best place to eat? We're talking about you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Justin is actually the lead on this project. Uh, we've got 2.5 million people in Europe have access to this app through a major insurance company. We're working on another one now for 2.2 million individuals to gain access to a slightly different app. We provide SaaS versions out there, but we're an integrated platform. And I think if you think about this, there's a lot of companies here, there's a lot of people developing ideas. Integration is a great way to do it. One app, I can guarantee you in the travel industry, one app focused on one purpose doesn't work. People have too many apps. So try to look at how you can actually take it and do things more with it. And take it so that the regular person traveling actually have access to the things they need when they do it. And I think that's a benefit of this kind of thing and the Travel Tech TO. OK. OK. I, I'm glad it was that finger. I wasn't too sure what you were doing. Okay. <laughs> Look, we always look for input. We have a large amount of developers in Toronto. Uh, we have people in different cities in Canada. We also have operations in France. Uh, we have content developers in, in Toronto. We have video production personnel. We do podcasts. We interview travel bloggers. We provide all of that because we have to enable these applications and drive people to use them. Just because you have it in the App Store doesn't mean anybody's ever going to see it. So just keep that in mind, OK? Great. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Robin. And Justin. <laughs> uh, do we have any questions for Robin? Here, yeah, we'll do this one for questions. Come on, one question, just one. OK. I'll also decline the microphone. Uh, OK. <laughs> See, everybody thinks they've got a big voice. So. <laughs> so when you're saying that one app shouldn't just do one thing, are you thinking like Alton Brown? Like task or are you thinking that you can build additional functionality into anything? Well, one of the purposes, what we see in our industry, so we're dealing with insurance companies with travel insurance, for example. What they do is they build an emergency assistance app 
that you can contact them if there's an issue and they add some content to it. But they, nobody downloads it and they wonder why. It serves one purpose, and nobody's going to do it. For travel insurance, it's the last thing they think about, okay? A travel agency, a tour operator will sell it because they make money, okay? An individual takes it because they think their safety is in risk. But emergency assistance people, we actually use geopointing, geotracking, so that we can give the direct location where you are to the assistance company so they give you the right information, and if you need an ambulance, they're going to get it to you. It's gonna be the Uber of the ambulances, okay? <laughs> but you're gonna get the information. So localization, tracking, all of these things work. The same thing is we have dashboards so that employer groups can connect with you. Hopefully you're not in a bad place, but connect with you if there's an issue. Like if there's an attack in Paris and you happen to be in Paris, they can tell you what's going on, where it is, and get away from that place and give you instructions. Two-way communication. So localization, all the things we have in tech, they can be used, and they can be used well. Does that answer your question? Okay. Another question. Um, well, I'll ask one, Robin. Yep. What you know, you're you're involved with risk and technology. What do you yeah, think we have the most? To, what do we have to be concerned about in the future with travel? Well, look, travel is a dinosaur too. It's an enterprise group. It's like newspapers, it's like uh, big companies, they haven't changed. They need to change. If you bring something to them, it doesn't have to be the early adopter that you want. It's the one that has to catch up. The one that has to catch up is the one that's going to pay you the money. Think about that. There's a lot of companies that, for example, buy our products because they can't do mobile. And we'll have native mobile apps but we can interchange and interconnect with their systems. The travel industry, I've been in it too, so I've got a, a chameleon background. I've had tour operators, I've owned a tour operation called Study Tours, I had travel agency chain. I understand, I've been a, a member of the World Travel and Tourism Council that you, and the World Economic Forum, so I go out and talk to all these people, but I gotta tell you too, with localization, the best way to understand a place is not sitting up in a Hyatt or a really fancy hotel, but it's getting down and talking to regular people and going out with them and having dinner. So I know I didn't answer it, but I tend to drift, so. <laughs> it was still very interesting, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, one more question. Way okay, we got back. one way in the back. I'll, I'll get you the mic. Oh, okay. I think everybody can hear me. Uh, everybody thinks that, I told you that. It's not true. <laughs> Considering this is, you have, a, I guess, an interest in security, and I appreciate that. Coming from a cybersecurity perspective, which is sort of what I represent, um, I'm curious to know, just in general, from the travel tech space and your company specifically, is there an interest, a slant? Do your clients need that type of edge? Okay, look, it's great you came up because I was going to actually start with privacy and security. Um, you, you have to understand this about and when you look at Snowden and the NSA and you look at hackers and, and crackers and everybody else is doing stuff, I've got a security tech background too. Um, that's what I mean, I'm a little bit of a chameleon. Um, I was in it early, uh, still technically in it today. People give up privacy, people give up security to get help. So there is a concern um, we're tracking people. We have to meet compliance. We have to meet security and, and privacy with all of the companies we deal with. Even though sometimes some of these big enterprise companies don't actually comply themselves. We have to because we're an outsourced group. But it's really interesting if you give real security people like the NSA, if you give them the capability to do anything, guess what they'll do? They'll do anything. And it's not that they can use it. The reason they've got these big, huge storage facilities is they cannot even use the content until afterwards. And you have to tell people that. You know, a funny thing, a couple years ago, and it's quite a long time ago, 
I had two marketing staff that were having an affair and they thought that because I was in the security business and another business, they wanted to go and see if there was any bugs in the ceiling or camera systems. And I went to tell them, I said, who the hell would want to listen to you guys anyways? Like seriously. <laughs> so yeah, there's a balance. Security on your bank account, yes. Security knowing where you are to help you out, people aren't so worried about it. So when you know this in cybersecurity, there's a give and a take. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. I don't know if it did. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Robin. Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather...